Square Orbit exists in the real universe. And today, I will be recreating Square Orbit in the Kerbal Space Program. If you are wondering, the thing is called Distant Retrograde Orbit. And basically, this is a very, very distant backward orbit affected by another celestial body. If you take theoretic Sun, planet and its moon, the moon would be in a such faraway backwards orbit that the Sun gravity itself changes its orbit into a square well, relative to a parent planet. The interesting part that we are not limited to a square. This orbit can be any figure, it is only depends on a distance. Aside the square, it can be almost a star, bestogon, nonogon, etc. And further we go, more sides we have. And, well, further we go, closer it resembles a circle and eventually Moon just escape the planet gravity and go into independent solar orbit. In the real life, we have only Triton, the moon of Neptune, as the only noticeable retrograde orbit in the solar system. Nevertheless, Triton is rather distant, but not distant enough to showcase this effect. We have been using this weird orbit for our spacecrafts in the Earth-Moon system. Most noticeable is China's Chang'e 5 orbiter Chang'e that first actually entered the Lagrange 1 point and then swapped to distant retrograde orbit. And another one is well-known Artemis 1 mission that used one revolution of such an orbit around the Moon. In Kerbal Space Program, we do not have unbody interactions, so I will be using Principia modification to upgrade KISS P1 simulation and allow for such an orbit with free body interaction. A long time ago, I had an idea of a space shuttle mission assembling the modular telescope in Kerbin orbit. But it kinda sounds bland, so I decided, well, let's make something interesting. So let's put this telescope into the square orbit, because, well, uh, YouTube, I think it's interesting, yeah, I hope, yeah, you here, alright. We will launch a space shuttle, assemble telescope in LKO, and put it into a distant retrograde orbit around Man, the square one. So without further ado, let's launch a space shuttle! For this mission I am using my old space shuttle. I think this thing is like 3 or 4 years old and I made obviously small retrofit and recolored the whole thing with the third modification. And yes, this is the literal name of the modification, third, yeah. <laughs> so all the visuals would be from my previous video and obviously the links are all down below in the pinned comment. Nevertheless, there would be a lot of things going wrong with this mission. I think there would be like four issues and I surprised that I actually made it. <laughs> so honestly, it was like rather soul-sucking experience, like KSP2 level of experience for myself. The footage in this video is sped up quite a lot, not only for visual necessity of like a storytelling, but this is like a physical necessity this time around. I had whopping 10 FPS during the whole mission and the main issue turned out to be the telescope itself. You see, it have something like 500 parts. While it is totally fine for anything modded Kiss P1, even with a bunch of mods, Principia is this extra icing on cake, which, uh, yeah, it's do the thing where it calculates extra physical interactions for all these parts, and it's just too much. Especially when you have like 56 docking ports stuck together in the cargo bay of a space shuttle. Yeah, I have done it to myself. Ah, alright. Uh, the launch system have two boosters to push the space shuttle out of the sphere, and from there, the single wolf engine is more than enough to achieve the circular orbit. Also, quick note over here, I was kind of really disappointed in the past with Kiss P2 going Kiss P1 road with two body interactions, no end body interactions, but with this Kiss P1 build where we have even better than Kiss P2 graphics in some places, it's kind of clear that end body interactions on top of great graphics are just too much. On the other hand, I couldn't really call like KSP2 developers real developers because it takes uh, so much time for their hotfixes to be delivered that they feel like a hit death of the universe at this point. Yeah, and Principia is like one-man job on a spare time, so nobody like really working on this issue or challenge, so maybe, maybe one day we will have photorealistic orbital simulator with n-body interactions. Yeah, one day. Alright, once in orbit, it is time to open cargo bay and start our construction. And obviously a free-floating telescope is not a great idea, so I need some sort of an anchor. And this would be a single hydraulic piston with a docking port, just open the cargo bay and extend the bloody thing. And I will be using a simple like orbital mobility unit to rearrange my telescope parts from my cargo bay into the actual telescope. And instantly you can see that there is something wrong with the space suits. Yeah, I totally broke this KISS P1 build. I was trying to fix my FPS issues with the Principia and I was like butchering the parts of this KISS P1 build to find the issue. And I definitely broke like Textures Replacer and Textures Unlimited. So space suits are bugged and solar panels will have no translucent effects that they should. And another challenge would 
be there like in terms of the Principia itself. In vanilla KSP you can get away with a lot of things when it comes to payloads and cargo base. This is not the case. If something is slightly clipped or too tight in the cargo bay in the vanilla KSP you can just use time warp to glitch the whole thing out. The sole purpose of the Principia is to simulate the part physics all the time, even in the time warp. This option is not really a thing and you need to be more precise with your payloads. I have struggled quite a bit when deploying the telescope parts from a cargo bay. You know, like circles and hexagons are not best friends when you pack one into another. And yeah, speaking of a telescope, it is 8 part assembly by design. Main central part with iron engine propulsion and central mirror and 6 radial mirrors in hexagon formation. And finally I have like central antenna of sorts, this thingy thingy, the pointy stuff. Uh, and yeah, releasing the first part was especially difficult and I even used like RCS on the space shuttle itself. Second part was like super easy, but after that we are entering like into a realm of a dual docking. Both in theory and practice, while dual docking and KSP-1 usually require rather high precision. But this assembly docking, like, uh, it, it's just worked. It was just snapping all together. I don't know what was happening here. Probably I made a good design for a change. <laughs> yeah. The whole assembly process took like several orbits and several real life hours. And after first five parts, it was a bit harder because, yeah, the last one, it's kind of a puzzle here. At this moment, I was not ready to release the telescope assembly itself. But at the same time, it is connected to a shuttle with a docking port where the last mirror would be placed. I decided to connect two mirrors together for a time being, a bit harder to maneuver with like twice the weight of a payload, but totally doable if you implement the space shuttle itself as an active system. Two stacked mirrors were docked together and it was time to attach the antenna, but I totally messed up my attachments, so I was unable to release the final part, this antenna finger. And it did, at this point it was like 6 hours into this mission, so find this mission again? was not really an option. Unless if I want to blow this video into 30 minutes of something... Yeah, but come on, I have too much respect to people watching and try to make my videos as short as I can. Probably not the best YouTube strategy. At this point I decided to land the space shuttle and it was a pretty easy deorbit, a bit of atmospheric glide, short transfer to the desert runway and landing. The landing was, well, really chill. The shuttle handles rather well and have relatively slow stall limits. Usually my shuttles and the stores like twice as heavy with the same amount of wing area and they have stall limits around like 100-120 meters per second, but here I can totally at like 60 meters per second or something, so yeah, it's rather chill one. And now we return to our telescope and final bit of assembly, that never happened, yeah. This is like, I think the, the third or fourth thing that went wrong with this mission. First one was the lathe, uh, totally like blasting out of Principia model. Joule system in vanilla KSP is not stable, so Principia can adjust this thing, but for some reason it not adjusted in this build, I don't know what happened there. Then was this whole 10 FPS thing, then was antenna permanently attached to a space shuttle, and now we have something weird with the telescope itself. At this point I had no idea what was happening honestly. It looked like two parts were trying to orbit each other and effectively making the docking impossible. I thought that this was some sort of a Principia bug or maybe feature. I'm not so familiar with Principia, it's like second ever mission for me in Principia. Honestly, when I found out the issue, I was absolutely surprised that I was able to pull off this mission. After me trying to close the gap by using ion engines of a telescope after like one hour after reloading KSP like three times, I just gave up on the whole thing about like assembling the telescope uh, until the end. <laughs> so yeah, the telescope with uh, only six mirrors no 7th mirror, let's put this telescope into a square orbit. Alright, the thing with a distant retrograde orbit is that you need to achieve some sort of oval shaped orbit relative to Kerbin, and there is like this thing called Lagrange points that are fixed orbits in free body interaction system. Some of them are stable, some of them are not, and to get into a distant retrograde orbit we need to glance around those like equilibrium Lagrange points. And surprisingly, a combination of L1 and L2 points, which are actually unstable and require constant correction, combination of those two unstable points 
points actually result into a very stable distant retrograde orbit, which is kind of surprising. And there are like scientific papers that describe how they find this orbit in real life and put spacecraft there. Uh, you think I have read them? No way. I'm just doing everything in true careful fashion with Mark 1 eyeballs. Uh, it reminds me of like those like softens from endless space that accidentally blow up their moon. Yeah, this is the way. So here would be something about two hours of footage where I'm trying to find this orbit by using my Mark 1 eyeball. Rather boring stuff, so I want to make a small mental exercise over here where uh, we are watching the time lapse of me actually finding this orbit and talking about some interesting stuff. So recently we have some really nice world building when it comes to like fictional solar systems. For example, Serrano's system with Battlestar Galactica. It took very goofy original concept of 12 habitable worlds in one solar system and wrapped it into a scientifically feasible package. Serrano's system now is a dual binary star system with several habitable worlds around each star. There are dual planets, planets in L4 and L5 points of gas giants, and even semi-habitable moon. Looks a bit artificial, but then Battlestar Galactica is like not shy about omnipotent beings meddling affairs of mere mortals, so it kinda works. And also we have Expand Season 4 with Elos and Artificial Ring of Moons around habitable worlds to do uh, something, probably something like like Apple VR Horn Hub, I don't know. <laughs> Rather dope stuff, but today we are talking about Distant Retrograde Orbit and Infinite Universe. So it is only a matter of time before we discover some solar system somewhere there in our universe with a moon around a habitable world in a square orbit. Although like habitable part is kind of questionable, it's kind of only fiction for now, uh, but while well, we are talking about science fiction. So imagine the civilization emerging on a planet with a moon in a square orbit. Just imagine everything in your solar system is circling in circles, but this thing is circling in square. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, probably Probably at some point it will give you a huge boost in your like orbital mechanics and orbital understanding of how things actually work. But before that, it's pretty much like some sort of divine will and interaction. And just imagine all the alien traditions, ceremonies, symbology and customs that this square orbit will inspire. But what if we can take this even one step further? What if this moon is so big that it have a thin atmosphere? Maybe even some liquid water? Maybe even some plant life blasted by panspermia from the parent planet like billions or millions of years ago? So your evolution is completely different on this planet, it's barely habitable but still habitable and just imagine like the early space exploration of such a place. That would be kinda a huge race to actually colonize this thing and it would be hard. It would be really hard, just barely habitable and just imagine like several generations later your people will have very different biology because they will need to adapt to live in a lower gravity of your big moon but still not a planet and they will have like super lungs like people in the mountains on earth able to squeeze in like every bit of oxygen from such a thin atmosphere. And then you can just throw some like disaster on the parent planet, wiping up the whole civilization and then wound up the cloak hundreds or thousands of years later and you have two almost alien civilizations to each other, living so close yet so far. One can be super scientific with all the true knowledge of their past and another one can be like some sort of like religious cult denying common roots of other civilization and wanting to actually purge the holy square orbit moon from <laughs> the from the infidels. You know, yeah, they're quite a setup. Throw the love story between members of each civilization and you have your science fiction ready to print. I'm totally blank in my mind about all the calculations on the size of this moon, how huge it can be, uh, maybe Mars size? I don't know, maybe. Definitely bigger than our moon, but at some point it will just break the whole system and it will not work with like sun-planet interaction and will go in its independent orbits. And there are usually some smarter people in the comment section on this channel uh, and I'm honestly so grateful that people can keep up uh, with my nonsense and <laughs> check orbital mechanics in my videos. Alright, enough of like fiction talk. By this point in the timelapse I should be somewhere close to achieving my square orbit. And there was one strange thing happening every time I was trying to adjust my orbital maneuvers and it was looking like Principia recalculating my orbit for some bizarre reason, but it was not the case. Remember those 56 docking ports on my telescope? Yeah, one of them is just doing crack and drive and moving telescope every time I'm not under the time warp. Yes, this was the case preventing me from docking last mirror and this is what moving my orbit constantly when I'm not under the time warp. Kinda surprised with me achieving such a precise orbit with the crack and drive at works. And now you finally can see the square orbit around Man. And from point of view of Kerbin, it looks like an oval-shaped orbit in resonance with Man. So this is the distant retrograde orbit in Kerbal Space Program. Feel free to leave the comments down below about square orbits. 
Until the next time, have a nice one and Yakis out.